Hello and welcome to the Wayne State Coaches Show, an exclusive here on MyWayNews.com. I'm Mike Carnes here to talk Wildcat Athletics, and on the big show this week, we'll talk to men's basketball coach Jeff Kaminsky as the Wayne State Wildcats get the uh, season started on uh, down in Missouri with the uh, Central Region crossover. We'll also talk to women's basketball coach Brent Polari as the uh, Wildcats hosted the MIAA NSIC crossover this weekend at uh, Rice, uh, this past weekend at Rice Auditorium. We'll have that and some other Wayne State athletics news uh, to talk about on this edition of the Wayne State Coaches Show. We're going to take a time out and come back and talk with men's basketball coach Jeff Kaminsky about the Wayne State Wildcats road trip this past weekend right after this timeout. The Coaches Show is sponsored by Pack and Save. Pack and Save is a proud supporter of Wildcat Athletics and is your one-stop shop for savings. Check out Pack and Save's excellent produce and find the best cuts in their grade A meat department. Be sure to stop at the Top Notch Deli where you can find their amazing fried chicken, daily lunch specials, and all the fixings for your next tailgate or viewing party. Pack and Save is open from 7.30 a.m. to 10 p.m. seven days a week and their staff is waiting to help you for all of your grocery needs. Pack and Save, your one one stop shop for savings in Wayne, America. Go Cats! Welcome back to the Wayne State Coaches Show on MyWayNews.com and time to talk men's basketball with Coach Jeff Kaminsky. Wildcats uh, tipping off the season in the Central Region Tip-Off Classic in Warrensburg, Missouri. Uh, got a, a nice win over Pittsburgh State on uh, Friday night, uh, winning 95-92 and then uh, coming up short in the uh, second half against uh, uh, the host team from Central Missouri and losing 73-67. Coach, uh, great way to start the season. I know we talked beforehand that uh, both these teams are going to be uh, probably among the contenders in the, in the uh, MIAA this year and, and uh, you guys did a fantastic job beating Pittsburgh State and almost got the, got the pair with uh, Central Missouri. Yeah, it's definitely a challenging start to our season. Uh, and, and as I thought, those are two really high-level teams. So to, uh, I think the overall perspective to go down and get a split and, and really be in position to win both games, um, we have to feel optimistic about our opportunity in terms of moving forward. Mm -hmm. uh, but also disappointed in that you know, we had a 15-point lead in the second game, and um, you know, we just we played in spurts too much this weekend, where some of them were really good. I mean, we had some really good basketball, but uh, you know, there are times where we we struggle a little bit, and uh, obviously in that second game against Central Missouri, where we uh, you know just didn't do enough good things to maintain a, a lead against a really elite team on their home court. Mm -hmm. The Wildcats on a Friday night against uh, Pittsburgh State got uh, Trevin Joseph's uh, 23 points. That was a, a, a team high effort there for the Wildcats. In that game, he was one of five uh, Wildcats in double figures. Vance Jansen added 19. Kendall Jacks had 12. Balance there with five players in the double figures in that Pittsburgh State win. You know, I, I think that's going to be a earmark of our team this season. Uh, we have some guys I think that can certainly score consistently. Um, you know, our three seniors, Trevin Joseph. You know, Kendall Jackson has been our leading scorer in the last couple of years, and, uh, and and Vance all can put up numbers. But uh, we have guys, as you mentioned, coming off the bench, and um, <clears throat> you know, guys like Nick Farini and Tony Bonner who are going to really add a scoring punch to us. And uh, Tay Jackson, as you mentioned, with nine rebounds. So I I, I do think that's going to be. Um, you know, real earmark of our team this year is just having balance, and and that uh, can be a good thing from the perspective of us being a little bit tougher to guard and not necessarily having to rely on that one or two guys. You know, every every single night. I think the challenge with that is when you do have one or two guys, uh, you sort of know where to go to in clutch situations, and I, I do think we have a little bit of both. I think we have balance, and we also understand guys that probably need to take shots at key times for us. And, and shooting 52% uh, from, from uh, three-point range in that game, 58% from the field for the game. You shoot, you shoot those kind of numbers, you're going to have a lot of success. Well, we are. Unfortunately, we shot it well and, and uh, still had to uh, struggle to, to win a game. But we played a really good team, and we didn't do a great job of, of controlling the pace of the game all the time with Pitt State. Uh, that, it might be the most athletic team we've played here, um, even going back to last year, the last couple years. Uh, so their athleticism put a lot of pressure on us, and we didn't deal with it, you know, the way I would have preferred uh, for a lot of the time. But we hung in there, made some big plays, and uh, I don't remember winning a game when we've given up 92 points. So <laughs> I don't know if that's a good sign or a horrendous sign, but uh, we'll take the win for sure. And they did put up 99 the next night, so um, they're they're just a really.
tough team to play against with their athletes. Yeah. Game on Saturday, the Wildcats, as Coach mentioned earlier, led by as many as 15 points. Uh, they were up by 33 uh, to 18 uh, late in the first half uh, before the Mules were able to come back and, and eventually uh, take take over the game. But uh, uh, again, the team uh, sh uh, shot the ball, ball pretty well. Trevin Joseph led the way with 20 points on 7 to 12 shooting, and Kendall Jacks had 17 points. Uh, Vance Jansen also hit in double figures with uh, 10 points. He also had five of uh, uh, the 12 assists that Wayne had and uh, seven rebounds. And you know, Jansen's one of those kids that he's been around here for some time and, and uh, um, has, has always been a, a key contributor to this team's uh, success over, over the course of his time here. Well, that's just uh, so many things. I mean, he's our best defensive player and he's being a little more aggressive scoring the ball, which is, is good for us and makes us harder to guard. But, uh, you know, Central Missouri is really good. They, you know, they're a national championship won the national championship I think four years ago and you know they don't lose a whole lot at, at home and uh, to really go in there and be in complete control of the game I mean, we I think they hit the first three of the game and then we're up 25 to 10 so we went on a 25 to 7 run there and really quieted the place and had control of the game and that's where we need to get better um, you know instead of taking a 15 point lead in half you know it ended up being five and you know we got a little uh, loose with the ball and and uh, that led to some scoring opportunities for them and uh, so we got to get rid of those negative spurts uh, we had a couple in, in that game where we had really control of the game second half we came out you know and again got that lead into double figures um, and we and we have a really good bench so it's not a matter of not having depth it's just a matter of playing consistently mm -hmm. and throughout the game and, and we didn't do that well enough to beat a really good team on their home court but uh, I think the nice thing about this weekend is you I think uh, fans can take some some comfort in that uh, seeing those those big spurts that you had uh, this team is capable of, of, of doing quite a bit uh, offensively and just minimizing those those uh, negative uh, areas uh, where, where a team team is able to get back into a ball game like that, uh, I think there's a lot of promise for this year's team. Yeah, we saw this first weekend. For sure, we we've got have a lot of progress we need to make yet. But uh, I mean that that's probably as tough as a weekend as we'll have all year. It is. Uh, it's very much like you know going on the road where you're you know going to a Mankato or you're going to a Winona and Upper Iowa back to back, and uh, so that is a a great. Uh, indicator of you know us being able to have success on the road but we've got to get a lot better and if we stay where we're at um, we're going to be a team that's capable of winning on any particular night uh, but we want to win consistently and, and to do that we've got to eliminate some of those droughts that we we had this weekend. Yeah. Wildcats are at home for the first time uh, Tuesday night they'll take on Wal Waldorf University out of Iowa um, what do you expect out of, out of that game coming up Tuesday? Well it'd be good to be at home and we have our four next four games at home and now we have 15 of our you know last 26 games at our home so you know, we to have a great year, we need to be really, really good at home. So it'll be good to get that started this week. Um, Waldorf will be an interesting opponent, uh, NAI opponent. They have some good athletes. They have a 7-3 center. Ooh. So um, that's something we probably won't see all year. Um, and he's given some, uh, you know, some teams some trouble. And the, the other factor with the, these NAI, the NAI schools that we play early, it's a little challenging because they, they've played a lot. I mean, they, they've played probably 10 games by now. I think they have six on their, their schedule, but they've played some other games that haven't counted exhibition games. So, And we've played, uh, obviously, one exhibition game there that we had, but, um, but they've played a lot. So they're more in the, in the mid-season form than, than we are coming off our first weekend. But we're, we're excited about being at home, and, uh, again, establishing our home court is going to be critical for us to have a great season. All right, so the Wildcats at home suit Tuesday night, 7 o'clock, uh, taking on Waldorf University. They're 1-1 one one on the season, and uh, hopefully, uh, as Coach said, start of a, a good stretch of home games. So a lot of great opportunities to see the Wildcats at home here at uh, Rice Auditorium. Coach, uh, good luck this week, and look forward to talking about uh, this game next week. Sounds good. Thank you. All right, we'll take a timeout and have more here on the Wayne State Coaches Show right after this timeout. Welcome back to the Wayne State Coaches Show on MyWayNews.com. Time to talk women's basketball with Coach Brent Polari. The uh, Wildcats getting the season off to a good start with two wins 
in the MIAA NSIC crossover. They defeated uh, Northwest Missouri State 75-58 on Friday night, and then Nebraska County 69-52 on Saturday. And anytime you start with two wins, that's a that's a good way to start the season. Yeah, it was a good start. Um, we talked about we were going in a little thin with injuries and stuff, so we're really pleased and uh, really happy with how we did. Yeah, the Wildcats uh, uh, got. Uh, uh, 17 points uh, in the first quarter to uh, take the lead for good against uh, Northwest Missouri State, and uh, Aaron Norland had a great ball game for the uh, for the Wildcats. Uh, scored a career high 21 points, went 10 to 20 from the field, and and uh, I, I know we talked about uh, how thin the, thin the roster was with injuries and everything, but Aaron really stepped up and, and performed well for it. She did, yeah, and she's uh, she's a really hard guard for people because she can play guard, she can play forward, she can play post, um, kind of whatever we, they put on her, we've got kind of an answer for it. Yeah, the Wildcats uh, also got uh, Haley Bessey uh, came off the bench to score 14 points, and then uh, Hallie B B uh, Bessey had 11 points, and uh, Andrea Larson had 10. And uh, also, uh, Wayne High alumni Kyla Hammer uh, scored six points in her first game in a Wildcat uniform. So a great, great scoring just uh, all, all the way up and down the lineup for you. Yes, yeah. and like I said, we were, we were thin, so everybody got to play, and everybody got to get some minutes, and uh, we distributed it well, and yeah, it was good. Yeah. 44% uh, uh, shooting from the field in that first game, and, and uh, Wildcats also had a 44-28 ed edge in rebounds. Uh, uh, I, I thought uh, uh, your ability to rebound the ball and, and, and to be able to score off that was was uh, also the key. That I think it was 23 to seven uh, edge there on second chance points. So a yeah. big, big when you can get rebounds that's, and score. That's huge, and when we have a big team like we do, um, that's something that we're going to be looking for. Um, Number one correlation in winning percentage or wins in the NSIC is rebound differentials. So that's something that we're really trying to focus on. Turn around on Saturday night, the Wildcats uh, facing Nebraska Kearney, our in-state rivals there. And uh, the uh, Wildcats outscored uh, Nebraska Kearney 41 to 25 in the second half. Held the Lopers to just eight of 28 shooting uh, from the floor in the second half to uh, close out the 17 point win there. Uh, kind of a back and forth game, but uh, you guys' defense in the second half obviously was uh, was huge. Yeah, uh, that team was well scouted, well coached. They played hard. Um, like I talked to you before, it was kind of a tale of two different games. Uh, the first game we played was a guard oriented game uh, that was more forwards and posts that were uh, we were focused on a little bit more in that game. But yeah, defensive battle and just a grinder. Lucy mm -hmm. had uh, 17 points in that game, along with six rebounds and six assists. And four steals. Uh, uh, Andrea Larson and Maggie Lowe each had 11 points in that game, and Aaron Norland with uh, nine rebounds. And uh, uh, Lucy had uh, uh, seven, six assists as well as uh, four steals. So just a great, great all around effort by the girls on Saturday. Yeah, all around effort. And again, I really like our defense. Our defense is coming on. Uh, we make it tough for people to score. Yeah, and I think that's something that's really important, when, especially when we get to the Northern Sun Conference play, is uh, defense is, is definitely a premium in, in this uh, conference. You want to you want to be playing playing solid defense uh, every time out. It is, yeah. We're still figuring it out and trying to get better every day, but yeah, that's something we're trying to focus on. Here. Yeah. Wildcats uh, have another tournament this weekend. They will go on the road to the Subway Classic in Quincy, Illinois. They'll play uh, Truman State on Friday at five o'clock, and then host Quincy University on Saturday at three o'clock. Uh, what, what are you looking at for those uh, games coming up this weekend? Um, so so far, I've been focusing on Truman. Um, having my assistant coaches working on Quincy and Truman also, but um, and. Truman's going to have a lot of uh, dribble drive, pretty athletic. Everybody can kind of score. Everybody can kind of shoot it. Um, so right now we're in, on this Monday. We're still focusing on us and things that we can tighten up. Probably tomorrow we'll be focusing a lot more on what they do in their scout. Coming up there. All right. So busy weekend for the Wildcats uh, with a couple games on the road in Illinois, and uh, they're two and zero on the year. So uh, hopefully we can uh, double that win total and uh, have two more wins to talk about next week. That'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> Try our best here. All right, Coach. Well, thanks a lot, and uh, good luck this week. All right, thank you. All right, we're going to take time out and have more here on the Wing State Coaches Show right after this. The Coaches Show is sponsored by Pack and Save. Pack and Save is a proud supporter of Wildcat Athletics and is your one-stop shop for savings. Check out Pack and Save's excellent produce and find the best cuts in their grade A meat department. Be sure to stop at the Top Notch Deli where you can find their amazing fried chicken, daily lunch specials, and all the fixings for your next tailgate or viewing party. Pack and Save is open from 7.30 a.m. to 10 p.m. seven days a week and their staff is waiting to help you for all of your grocery needs. Pack and Save, your one-stop shop for savings in Wayne, America. Go Cats. We're back on the Wayne State Coaches Show, wrapping things up for another week, and I uh, want to talk a little bit about some other athletics going on. Uh, the Wayne State football uh, team closing out the season uh, Saturday with a 26-7 loss to uh, the University of Sioux Falls up in uh, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Uh, the Wildcats uh, finished the year with a 3-8 record. 
Uh, the Wayne State women's volleyball team uh, facing Southwest Minnesota State in the uh, first round of the Northern Sun Conference Tournament up in Marshall, Minnesota. And uh, the Wildcats uh, end their season with a three-set loss to the uh, Mustangs in, in that match uh, to end their uh, 2018 season. Uh, soccer news, uh, Wayne State uh, senior Christina Sassi was named to the 2018 Google Cloud Academic All District 7 women's soccer team and she was selected by uh, uh, members of the College Sports Information Directors of America. She uh, carries a 4.0 grade point average majoring in sociology and psychology and now she uh, advances on to a possible uh, academic All-American uh, selection as well. She uh, uh, received third team or her third All-NSIC honor uh, in four years this year. She was named to the uh, second team of all NSIC after being named honorable mention her freshman and uh, junior years. She led the Wildcats in scoring the season with 10 points, scoring four goals and recording two assists while playing in 17 games with 14 starts. And uh, last but not least, the uh, rugby teams at uh, Wayne State College uh, hosting their regional tournaments uh, this weekend at the uh, Wayne Rugby Club. And the women's rugby team are headed back to the Final Four to defend their national title. They uh, came away with a big win uh, over Miracosta, California, 53-10 uh, to 10 to advance to the NSCRO Final Four, which will be held December 1st and 2nd in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, they uh, reached the uh, uh, Final Four with a 55 to 10 win over Northern Michigan on Saturday and uh, they are now 11 and 0 on the year and will be uh, playing for a national championship uh, in the first weekend in December. The Wayne State men uh, reached the Elite Eight of their uh, uh, national tournament with two wins this weekend. Uh, they uh, won on Sunday 30 to 12 over the University of Nebraska at Omaha in a very physical game on Sunday afternoon. They got there by way of a forfeit. Creighton University uh, uh, was in the uh, other matchup uh, against Wayne State on Saturday and they decided a few minutes before game time that it was too cold for them to play. And so they uh, forfeited the game to Wayne State, don't ask me why, but uh, the uh, Wayne State men uh, advanced there on a forfeit and then beat UNO. So they will move on to the Elite Eight. That won't be played until next spring. The NSCRO Men's 15 on 15 National Tournament is held in the spring. And so they will play uh, next uh, March against uh, the winner of a regional uh, include, that includes teams from Louisiana, Texas, and New Mexico. And that will be coming up uh, toward the end of March. That will do it for this week's edition of the Wayne State Coaches Show on MyWayNews.com. We will be back with another edition next week right here on MyWayNews.com. Until then, this is Mike Carnes. We'll see you later.